In this video, we're going to give you the history, the functionality, and how to tune heading hold for your airplane. Let's get started. So once again, we'll use the helicopter as the example. So in heading hold with radio control helicopters, um, especially, um, you know, we, we came up with priority. It really helped. Now you have these high rotation rates. Well, individuals started doing some pretty crazy things with helicopters and, um, you know, including flying sideways really rapidly, flying backwards really rapidly. And again, folks were finding, you know, a rate gyro still wants to weather vane into the natural direction of wind. So when you fly backwards, it takes an awful lot of effort unless you have heading hold in order to keep the tail, you know, tail first because you're going backwards in the wind, especially at really, really high speeds. There were a few people that could do it. There was Curtis uh, Youngblood, for example, could, could kind of pull it off. But like doing backwards rolls, backwards loops and things like that were pretty almost impossible to do until heading hold came along. Well, again, some really smart people came up with the idea that, hey, let's incorporate heading hold. So what heading hold does is so rate mode, like I said, the, the airplane or helicopter will weather vane. It, it basically is a damper. So it slows down the intended rate of rotation um, that's influenced by external forces like wind and so on. What heading hold does is it actually maintains that heading. That's why it's called heading hold. So when you release the stick, be it on aileron, elevator, or in the case with um, helicopters, it was primarily on rudder back in those days. When you release the stick, the tail and the nose, it'll stay in the same position. So if you fly sideways, if you fly backwards, whatever, the tail will always stay in the same position, um, assuming it's set up correctly. Um, what this allowed people to do was crazy maneuvers with helicopters. In fact, average people were able to progress to do, you know, backwards roll, backwards rolling circles, backwards loops, um, sideways maneuvers, and so on, because you didn't have to do anything with the rudder. You place the tail where you want it to be. So, um, gosh, and this was like in the, uh, like in the middle 80s. And so I actually started um, flying helicopters in the late 70s. So um, was fortunate enough to experience all these innovations as, uh, as we went through. So um, heading hold though, a really, really big deal. We started applying heading hold to airplanes as well, probably in the late 80s. And the primary reason and the first reason that we used was for torque roll training. So all of a sudden it became very, very popular for people to be able to hover airplanes. Uh, Kike Summonzini at the TOC um, was able to hover um, without gyros and everybody thought, wow, this was great. And everybody was trying to do it, but it was very difficult to do. Well, by adding a gyro, that helped a lot, but adding a gyro with heading hold helped tremendously. So assuming that the airplane has a lot of control authority, you can actually set up a gyro such that the, an airplane, you can get it to hover hands off. Now it's a little tricky because the airplane itself has to have plenty of power and a lot of control authority, but I've certainly had airplanes where I can pull it into hover and turn on the gyro, turn the gains way up with heading hold, and it'll you know, just basically sit there. Of course, naturally it drifts with the wind, but that's where heading hold was first being utilized with airplanes. What's happened since then is airplane development's gotten a lot better. Um, pilots have also become a lot more skilled, and now not that many people use that for hovering training. Some people for hovering training use it a little bit, especially on rudder, but not as much as they used to. So heading hold really isn't used as much anymore as it, as it was at one point. Um, however, it's still very beneficial for hovering. So, um, so for airplanes, the heading hold for sport flying and for precision flying of course, in a lot of competitions, uh, gyros are not allowed. Um, so in competition, for the most part, you're not allowed to use an active gyro. But for sport flying, some folks, including myself, I like to turn the gain up slightly, heading gain up slightly for roll and roll only. What it seems to do is it helps the airplane be more stabilized and more trim. So when I release the stick and roll, the airplane locks in and it's just, it's solid and roll. So you just can't get that same feeling unless you have heading hold. Especially nowadays, we fly a lot of airplanes that are you know, foam, they're not rigid. It's not like the composite airplanes that we used to fly that were very rigid, ultra, ultra precise. You know, nowadays with the foamy airplanes, um, the, the heading hold gives them that precise feeling of a really well-built tuned composite airplane on roll only. 
So by the way, when we go through this, and I'll show you here in a second how to do it, there's also a warning about putting it on rudder. So on rudder, if you add heading hold to rudder, you're gonna get a very unnatural feeling when you make the turn. So you'll, you'll bank into a turn and the airplane won't wanna, won't wanna turn into the turn. I mean, so to access the heading hold feature, again, we'll go to forward programming, go to gyro settings, AS3X settings, and the third item down is heading. So we'll select heading. And again, you have the ability to set them independently in each flight mode. And you also have the ability to set heading hold for the roll, pitch, and yaw. Again, down here at the bottom it says caution. Um, when using yaw heading gain, um, as I mentioned just a few minutes ago, be very careful when you apply this to the rudder. So let me show you how um, heading hold works. So. If you'll take a look, when I rotate in yaw here, or I'm sorry, when I rotate this in roll, um, you'll notice that when I rotate, it always comes back to its original position. So um, if I apply heading hold, and I'm gonna put a big number of heading hold, this is gonna be 100% only for the uh, demonstration here. You, you know, 100% is an awful lot. So now look what happens. When I rotate this and leave it in that position, the servo actually stays in that position. And the reason it does is it gives, so if I roll to the right, it gives it left correction, and then it stays in that position until it comes back to its original position. So that's how heading hold works, and that's the way you can tell if it's turned on in your airplane. If the airplane was turned on, you'll move the, uh, you'll roll the um, airplane, and the aileron will stay up in one position, it'll go down in the other position. By the way, a lot of times when you, um, when you set the airplane on the runway, the aileron or the elevator may not be centered. And of course, what you do is you simply uh, hit the stick and it'll recenter it. By the way, heading hold is only applied at center. So, so let me see if I can show you how this works. So heading hold is applied at center. So I roll. So if I give a displacement, you'll see heading hold is not being applied. So heading hold only occurs at center because the only time you want heading hold to work is when you're at the center. That's when you want it to hold. So that's what priority and heading hold are about. And I would suggest you give them a try. Um, they're interesting features and functions that uh, an awful lot of people utilize.